Taoist practice is not in the mountains, but in the vast world of mortals. It is only through the cultivation of a compassionate path that we hope to alleviate the worries and difficulties of the people of Li, Yushushan, a female, entered the temple at the age of six and excelled in the five techniques of Taoism. At the age of sixteen, she passed the ninety-seven orifices of the Hunyuan Wuji Gong. Her master, the Chongshu Taoist, drove her down the mountain to explore the mortal world, hone her mind, and had no choice but to bid farewell to her master. She went down the mountain and entered the city of the mortal world, starting her brilliant life from then on. Su Xiansheng, male, orphan, is the only disciple of the hidden immortal sect. He travels through the three realms of heaven, earth, and humanity, and accidentally meets Yu Shushan. From the beginning of the battle, to their love-like journey in the mortal world, whether they are separated or united, please look forward to their magical emotional journey. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a mountain. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Once upon a time, there was a mountain called Jiliang Mountain, and there was a view on the mountain called Lintian Temple. There is an old Taoist in the temple, and of course, there is also a young Taoist. Jiliang Mountain is a mountain among the mountains near the Ganyang border, resembling the back of a bream in a sea of clouds, towering high, so it is also called Yuji Mountain. The Lintian Temple on Yuji Mountain is said to have a history of over 1,700 years and was first built in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. However, with the change of dynasties, the wind and clouds have changed, and the stars have changed. The current Lingtian Temple has been eroded by the wind and rain, like an old man in the twilight, tired and shrouded in the depths of the mountains and forests, no longer known to outsiders, like an island far away from the mortal world. Oh! Oh! With a crow of chickens, Yu Shushan lay motionless on the wooden couch, slightly lifting a line of his right eyelids and holding the window. The outside was still pitch black, with no bright colors on the windows. Sigh. Master is really putting in a lot of effort. A few years ago, he was barely able to learn how to crow like a rooster. Now he's a bit old and his voice is not clear. This rooster crow seems to have chronic rheumatism, hoarse and deep, with a dragging and unclear ending. It's too fake. A few years ago, the rooster raised in the temple was infected by the crowing of his master's rooster, and he would also respond twice. Unfortunately, this rooster has lived for nine years, only one year later than Yu Shushan, and it is equivalent to her junior brother. After being fooled by my master for years, my husband's chicken spirit and spirit have been exhausted. It mostly dozes off during the day and has been too lazy to crow for the past two years. If it hadn't kept its childlike body, it wouldn't have lived for nine years and would have died long ago. On the pitch black roof beam, there was a thud and a sound could be heard. Get up. Get up. Wow. Get up. Yu Shushan let out a sigh, Yabao. Why don't you just follow along and make fun of me? Master has been driving me down the mountain every day since this year. How many more days can I sleep here? Let me squint again, okay. Morning class. Morning class. Wow. Get up. Yabao relentlessly screamed in the darkness. You. Someone else's pet is cute and adorable, likable. Since ancient times, I have never seen you so shameless and incomprehensible as a crow's mouth. I shouldn't have taught you to speak in the beginning. Forget it. Go and sleep on the pile for a while. Opening the thin quilt, Yu Shushan's body bounced up and emerged through the window. A few of them jumped up and arrived at the vegetable garden behind the observation. A little below my feet, my figure rose from the ground, a golden rooster standing on its own, steadily landing on a Tuzhang tall jujube tree stake in the vegetable field. I rested my left foot on my right knee and slowly squatted down, like a child worshipping Guanin. Wow! Yabao fell on the left shoulder of Yu Shushan like a shadow attached to his body. Three years ago, Yabao was originally a young bird in a crow's nest on the wall of the Tian Guan Mountain. For some unknown reason or due to some unforeseen circumstances, 
when it hatched for more than ten days, it never returned to its nest. There were originally three young birds in the nest, while the other two crawled out of the nest due to hunger and fell to the ground. Fortunately, Yabao fell into a pot of flowers at the bottom of the wall and escaped unharmed. Yu Xiuxian, who was watering the flowers in the morning, found it covered in fluff and curled up with a few sparse and hard feathers, trembling under the leaves. He felt very pitiful and picked it up in his bedroom. He used a wooden box to cover it with rags and made a bird's nest for it. He slowly raised it with rice grains and teased him to talk. He named it Yabao and kept it as a pet all along. Yabao is very intelligent. He can pronounce the word Qingxi in three months and has been inseparable from Yu Xiushan. He stays on the bedroom beam at night and later becomes a timekeeper to supervise Yu Xiushan's martial arts practice. Yu Xiushan let out a snort, and Ren Yabao stood on his shoulder, focusing on the operation of the Hunyuan Wuji Gong. The interior was calm and clear, and the breath flowed. Starting from the Sea of Qi in the Dantian, passing through the Zhangmen Tuk, all the way up, passing through the Baihui of the Pancreatic God Gate, and the Yin Tail of the Feng Qi K in the Xingfeng Mansion. Qi flowed like a long river, gurgling and surging like waves. Looking into the back window with a pair of eyes, I saw Yu Xiushan standing on a pile like an iron cast, with a hint of cunning and pride flashing in his eyes. I touched the sparse beard of the goat with one hand and nodded in satisfaction. Taoist Chengxu turned around and walked towards the kitchen on the right, murmuring softly. One mountain, one mountain. It's not that master is ruthless, the school has rules. At the age of sixteen, when you step down the mountain and walk in the mortal world, it's time for you to showcase yourself. Sigh. In fact, master, I am not willing to let you go. I am the only one left in this Lin Tian temple. While muttering, I went into the kitchen to get breakfast. The practice of Hunyuan Wuji skill reaches its peak, with 108 orifices and acupoints fused and connected, and internal qi filling all parts of the body. It has the beauty of feathering and ascending to immortality, resembling a semi-immortal body. At the age of six, Yu Xiushan obtained the Lingtian Temple and was appointed as a disciple of the Chengxu Taoist sect. He was taught the Hunyuan Wuji Gong, which he had practiced for ten years. Now, he has penetrated ninety-seven acupoints and orifices throughout his body, making him one of the highest practitioners of the Hunyuan Wuji Gong in the history of the Lingtian Temple. Perhaps this is due to the opportunity when he was six years old, which brought both good and bad luck. Every time the internal qi passes through the menstrual period, although it is already warm and trembling, it always cannot be broken, still like a tough thin film separated. There is no other way for you Shushan. Practicing martial arts is like grinding water. He can only drum and sway his internal energy repeatedly, and one day he will suddenly open up. As the morning sun emitted its first ray of sunshine from the clouds in the east, Yu Xiushan suddenly opened his eyes and faced the direction of the morning sun, receiving a hint of warmth into his eyes. What she cultivates is not Tang San's purple extreme demon eyes, but the Taoist's divine light of breaking deception. In the morning sun, there is a trace of innate golden and black fire spirit, which is the most capable of penetrating illusions, the secret technique of breaking the delusion of divine light is a martial art in the great Xianjing, which is a Taoist secret technique that can see through illusions and drive away ghosts. No one has successfully cultivated it in the Lin Tian Guan. The most difficult part of this method is not cultivation, but having the starting conditions for cultivation is extremely difficult. Yu Xiushan had no choice but to practice the divine light of breaking awakening. It was only because she accidentally ate three spirit illusion Liuguang fruits back then that she suffered daily pain and couldn't see things. Her master then remembered the secret method of breaking the divine light of breaking awakening and tried to let her practice it, but she didn't want to distort it and randomly refined it into the divine light of breaking awakening. Now she has five levels of skill. After a quarter of an hour, the rising sun shone brightly and it was not suitable for further practice. 
Yu Xiushan closed his eyes and digested the aura of the golden and black fire spirit that entered his eyes, storing it in the hole of Ching Sob. When she accidentally ingested spiritual illusion sulfur light fruit, she was struck by its abundant medicinal energy, causing her eyes to bleed and protrude, almost bursting. Fortunately, she encountered her master's intervention, and her internal energy was trapped in the Yin Tang acupoint for her, which saved her from being blind in both eyes. However, at that time, the Yin Tang acupoint was bulging high and ugly, later on, Yu Shushan began to cultivate the divine skill of breaking mistakes, guiding the medicinal power of the spirit illusion sulfur light fruit to slowly nourish his eyes, and opened up the Qingqi acupoints on both sides as energy storage bases for his eyes. The small package at the printing hall disappeared, and his eyesight doubled. With the spiritual protection of the spirit illusion sulfur light fruit, his eyes could only accept the golden crow fire spirit at the beginning of the morning sun. At this moment, Yu Xiushan's eyes were warm and comfortable to the extreme, his dantian was full, his whole body was peaceful, and he was as light as a flying swallow, with a feeling of wanting to fly through the void. Ishan, breakfast is ready. You can finish your work now. Chapter 2 Farewell Between Master and Apprentice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Daoist Chengxu stood at the back door to greet him. Behind this temple, there was a one-acre soil flat, half for growing vegetables and half for practicing martial arts. There were also some flowers and plants planted by Yu Shushan next to it, so it was called a vegetable garden, thank you, master. Yu Shushan jumped off the wooden stake and scooped half a wooden basin of water from the water tank on the side of the vegetable garden. After a quick wash, he entered the cafeteria. Ha! Huh. Master! What's a good day today? I fried two fried eggs and gave them to me, oh, do you want to use these two fried eggs to coax me down the mountain? No way. The Chengshu Taoist was troubled by this elf's strange concern for his disciples, and he had no temper at all. Since she went up the mountain, he had not lived a few days of peace, but he was also the favorite among the five disciples. Ishan, did you forget that today is your birthday? Of course, this egg is for your birthday celebration. If you eat the egg, you will be sixteen years old. I understand. Once you understand, it's good. Be good, eat while it's hot. Don't you still want to drive me down the mountain? A mountain. Master wouldn't be willing to drive you down the mountain. Isn't it the rule of our ancestors to set it up on the mountain? Master can't do anything about it. If I dare to shield you, no one can hold on to Grandmaster's coffin, even I have to put a bag on my head I don't know what Grandmaster thought at the beginning, he made this broken rule. Isn't it good to practice honestly in the temple? Why do you have to rush your disciples down the mountain and explore the mortal world? Yu Shushan couldn't help but get angry. She had become accustomed to a peaceful life on the mountain and disliked the trivial things of flattery and flattery outside. You can't say that. Our Taoism is not like Buddhism. In Buddhist temples, there are many pilgrims who give alms, and we can sit at the door of absorbing gold, attracting a wide range of charitable guests. We Taoists advocate that we should live on our own. It is hard to come by thinking. One kanji, one meal, and it is difficult to keep thinking about things. Daomen is originally meant to help alleviate poverty and alleviate the suffering of the people. How can they stay in the temple all day long, eat the food of the people, and enter the mortal world on their own? With the five arts of Daomen, they seek their own clothing, food, and shelter, and help others relieve their troubles and dangers. This is the path of righteousness. Master, I eat less. Ishan, even if my master and disciple eat less, they still have to eat after all. In the past decade, Master has not been able to leave the viewing area conveniently for you, and has relied entirely on your four senior brothers to support you. This is not a problem after all. Moreover, traveling in the mortal world is not only a rule of our ancestors, but also a practice. It is also an action to promote Taoism, and it is the responsibility of every Taoist disciple, Master, I'm still young. 
I haven't reached the national legal age yet. Ishan, you are already sixteen years old, where are you getting younger? Master, I have been traveling since I was twelve years old, following your ancestor through twenty-eight provinces in the north and south. Your four senior brothers, all around the age of fourteen, went out to observe and travel around, benefiting the people, Master, my realm is still low. Are you still in a low realm? Infinite Heavenly Sovereign. Just Hunyuan Wuji skill. Master, I only have 88 acupoints and orifices, but you have 97 acupoints and orifices, I haven't even managed to break the delusion of divine light, you have reached the fifth element. I have only read over 1,700 volumes of the Taoist Pharmacopoeia, but you have read the Tripitaka Pavilion to the fullest. The five arts of Taoism include mountains, medicine, destiny, divination, and divination. Apart from having a little less practical experience, I have to worship you as my teacher in terms of understanding and applying techniques, are you still not at a high level? You don't even need to walk in the mortal world to reach the 108 acupoints and become an immortal. Then, you can lead your master and ascend to heaven together. It's okay not to mention the realm, but when it comes to this, the old Taoist Chongxu feels angry. After decades of hard work, he was surpassed by a disciple who closed the door for ten years. This is something that makes people both happy and sad. Where should I go to reason? Yu Shushan lazily ate the fried egg noodles and suddenly came up with a plan, saying something. Master, I haven't prepared the magic tools and pills to go down the mountain yet. He <laughs> he. Master has already prepared a complete set for you. Chongxu Dao Chang turned around and took a dirt yellow cloth bag. He held it in his left hand and inserted it with his right hand, taking out the contents one by one. The first one is a black wooden scabbard sword that is five feet long. This sword is the treasure of the Lingtian Temple, the Huaixin Demon Slaying Sword. Originally an iron meteorite formed from the remains of a comet, it was accidentally picked up by the eighth generation leader of the Lintian temple, Lingyuan Dao Chang. Later, he found a famous craftsman to refine the refined iron and cast this sword, which has wind and lightning attributes and can ward off evil spirits and demons. Its sword is self skilled. The second item is a pair of Chinkuan circles. This treasure is not like other families where yin and yang are intertwined, but rather a combination of yin and yang. When embedded together, it is called Hunyuan Zhua, and when separated, it is called Qianquan Circle. The third piece is a Dharma seal made of lightning struck peach wood, called the Nine Heavens in Yuan Pu Hua Tian Zun Lei Bu Yin, which is also an old object. The fourth piece is a grey stone plate with an unremarkable appearance. Master, are you going down the mountain? Or am I going down the mountain? These magical tools are all treasures of the Lingtian Temple. Even the nine-color true mirror magnetic compass has been moved out. Usually, you wouldn't want me to touch them again. This is your heartfelt flesh. Sigh. You silly child, would you still need my old bone to stand out even if you were born and walk? Who else can I give these things to if I don't give them to you? Master, you told me earlier. With these good things, I'll be right down this mountain. Yu Shushan chuckled and took the stone compass, holding it in his arms, you little miser. Daoist Chengxu no longer took out each one, but poured the bag onto the table. Wow! Pour out a pile, there are more than twenty colorful things. A bundle of yellow rune paper, three rune pens, and a box of vermilion, a string of nine ancient coins, an antique turtle shell, three bottles of tonifying pills, three bottles of regulating qi powder, and a bag of 20.7 golden needles. Yu Shushan cleaned up and packed them one by one in a cloth bag, feeling quite satisfied in his heart. With this complete set of magical tools and utensils, it's strange to be hungry for my fairy. Master, you still need a mirror to illuminate the demon. Where did you hide it? Yu Shushan's mischievous spirit has broken again, and he still wants to tease his master. You have reached the fifth level of your Pokemon Divine Light, why are you still remembering master's Pokemon Mirror? Isn't your Pokemon Divine Light all in vain? 
For the past ten years, Taoist Chengxu has been tormented by Yu Xiushan to the point of immortality and death, and she is not used to talking to her. Master, I'm too lazy to use it. It would be great to have a magic mirror. Hold the mirror and shake it, it's so convenient. Okay, okay, okay. Here you are. It's useless for me to keep it, as long as you don't mind being burdened by the difference. Chongxu Daochang took out a round copper mirror the size of a palm from his arms. On one side, it illuminated his eyebrows and on the other, it cast a dragon head with round open eyes. This dragon is a candle dragon, with eyes like a stick, and it knows the details. This mirror is called the candle dragon mirror, and all evil spirits and ghosts have nowhere to hide when illuminated. Master, in a few days, choose an auspicious day on the ecliptic and let the disciples go down the mountain. Ishan, Master has already selected it for you. Today is the auspicious day of the yellow road, which is the most convenient for travel. It benefits the East greatly, promotes the development of the city, and brings great prosperity to the business. Today's day is simply tailor.made for you. Really, that's still a mistake, how could Master deceive you? Master, why don't we discuss and discuss? No discussion. Ishan, rules are rules. In the future, if you become the leader, you will have to do the same. Oh, then I'll pack my luggage. I really need to go down the mountain. Go. Go. Sigh. Taoist Chengxu let out a long and dark sigh. He didn't want this precious disciple to come down the mountain. It was really determined by the rules of the sect, and he didn't dare to take refuge. After Yu Xiushan left, there was only one mountain, one view, and one person left. It was so lonely. After spending ten years together as a master and disciple, the love between father and daughter grew stronger. This separation lasted only three years. How could it not be sad? Yu Xiushan returned to his room, opened the wooden cabinet, and inside was a packed backpack. In fact, she had already known that she was going down the mountain, had already packed her clothes, and was sure that today was the day she was going down. Always procrastinating, half teasing the master, and half truly reluctant to part. Take out the backpack, open the zipper, and put the magic tool cloth bag gifted by the master into the backpack. I looked around again at the bedroom I had lived in for ten years, and I brought everything I needed without missing anything. Master had already stood and waited in front of the Lingtian temple, holding a brush of dust in his arms. The morning wind blew the grey Taoist robe with a desolate expression. Master, I. Ishan, Master is fine and can live well alone. Don't worry. After you come down the mountain, if you encounter any difficulties, just come to your senior brothers and they. It's not a violation of the sect rules, well, master, I bid farewell to you, disciple. Yu Shushan turned to the front, put down his backpacks, knelt down obediently, and cowed out his head three times. Daoist Chengxu pulled up Yu Shushan and vigorously raised his hand to touch the head of a young disciple who was nearly 1.7 meters tall. All right, Ishan. Be careful on your own all the way. Three years will pass quickly, and then you can choose to revisit or continue your journey. Yes, the disciples will strictly abide by the rules and follow their master's teachings. Master, I'm leaving. Yu Shushan put his backpacks on his back stepped down the steps of Lintian Temple, walked over the slate, and descended along a small path. At the turning point, looking back, the Chengxu Taoist still stood in front of the steps, like a pillar of withered wood. Yu Shushan could no longer hold back his eyes, tears streaming down like pearls as he hissed. Master, I will miss you. Chapter 3 First Business You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yuanbao Village is a mountainous natural village in Qiyuan County, named after its elevated terrain with a low dot lying center resembling a gold and silver ingot. There are about a hundred households in Yuanbao Village, and only one road leads to the outside. Most of them live on either side of this road in order. 
At the western end of the village, there is another small road that connects to the main road. The road turns with the stream, and at the turning point, there are three dilapidated adobe tiled houses, all of which are buildings from the 1980s. The tiled house is built along a small path, with several rows of vegetable fields next to it. In the vegetable fields, some common vegetables are grown. By September, it is the end of summer vegetables and the time to plant winter vegetables. An old woman pulled out a three-foot-tall chili tree in the vegetable field, dug up the soil again, and planted spinach, radish, and snow red. In the land of Shangxi and Gansu, the lus is sticky and the soil is dry and hard. The old woman is hunching her waist and holding a rake with only two teeth left to plow the ground. A tall girl walked along the path, wearing jeans and a white shirt, carrying a pair of shoulder bags, with long hair simply tied behind her head, at this moment, the sunset is setting in the west, the evening clouds are coated with gold, the geese are falling in the sky, and the old trees are crowing back. Auntie. Auntie. Is it convenient to ask for a sip of water to drink? The old woman who was digging the ground stiffened for a moment and clumsily turned around. I saw a young girl of sixteen or seventeen, with eyebrows and phoenix eyes, a smiling face full of likable feelings, looking straight at me. Did the girl call me? The old woman was a bit puzzled. It was rare for outsiders to come to live in this village. The girl looked very familiar and clearly wasn't from the village. Yeah. Auntie, I'm walking far away and thirsty. I'm begging for some water from you. Would it be convenient or not? Ah, what are these words? It's not convenient for rural people to drink water. The old woman threw away her iron rake and walked out of the vegetable field, patting the soil on her vegetable leaves all the way, while saying, Come on, come on, come on, girl, come in and sit down. Don't think it's dirty when it comes to rural households. This is exactly the true ancestor of Yu Shushan, the mountain goddess who has been traveling all the way down the mountain, from Jiliang Mountain to here, it takes eight or nine hours to walk with a steep downhill path of over 30 miles and a rural path of nearly 40 miles. Even though she has profound skills in Hunyuan Wuji, the journey of over 70 miles has made her legs as iron, her tongue smoking, and she is tired and hungry. When you see this village and the old woman, you must first ask for water to quench your thirst. These three adobe tiled houses are painted with a layer of white lime on the outer wall. Over time, many areas have cracked and peeled off, revealing the Lus embryo wall inside. As the old woman passed through the fenced courtyard and entered the hall, she found that the house was very clean, with intact walls and a layer of newspaper pasted on it, making it look neat and clean, the lime-mixed soil floor was swept dry and tidy, without any dirt or disorder. The old woman dragged a chair and wiped it with her sleeve, Miss, sit down first and wait for me to brew tea. Auntie, don't be polite, don't trouble, just take a sip of cold water. How can this be? Children from all walks sweat and drinking cold water can easily get sick. Boiling water is fast, please wait a moment. The old woman walked into the kitchen on the left back with her feet in a circle. After a while, she used a lacquered wooden tray to bring out a cup of tea, Yushushan quickly stood up and took the slightly notched cup from the plate. At the same time, he glanced at the old woman's face, but her complexion was withered and yellow, with dark spots the size of beans on her left and right cheeks, Yu Shushan felt a bit surprised and suspicious when he saw that the old woman's walking posture was a bit strange, her face had a sickly appearance, and her cheeks did not have the normal longevity spots of old age. Thank you, auntie. Are you celebrating your birthday this year? What kind of longevity? I'm 56 years old this year, and my son and daughter dot in dot law have all gone out to work. My old lady is the only one at home. Ah. A person at the age of 56 looks older than a person at the age of 70, with 80% having an illness that cannot be cured. Auntie, do you feel bloating and pain in your lower abdomen while walking? Your lower abdomen is generally sagging, and you always feel like you need to urinate. Eh. Little girl, are you a doctor? 
You seem to be able to see a doctor, you're right, but this is just an old problem. It's okay. The old woman herself dragged a chair and helped herself sit down. Auntie, have you ever had a baby before and took on a burden, or fell down? The old woman looked at Yushushan with increasing surprise, how could you know this? Back then, our family was poor. We had children, and no one had the leisure time to sit around. Our family fed pigs and cows, and men couldn't keep up with it. Once when I went to cut grass, I accidentally fell off a grassy slope and felt a bloating sensation in my lower abdomen. However, there was no obvious pain, so I thought I could endure it for a few days, unexpectedly, this kind of woman's illness keeps falling behind. It's not easy to talk to others about it, and she gradually gets used to it auntie, this is a disease called sagging pouches, which is not particularly difficult to treat, but it cannot be cured without treatment. It's so uncomfortable to keep dragging on. You sit down, I'll give you a pulse. No need. No need. Girl, to be honest with you, I don't have any spare money to treat my illness. The medicine is so expensive now, it's not worth it. The old woman waved her hands together, indicating that there was no need to trouble. Yu Xiuxian's heart softened. It was really not easy for a poor family. Even though they knew there was a disease to treat, they dared not and could only endure it. This old woman has a kind heart and has been tormented by illness for half her life. She deliberately went down the mountain to explore the mortal world, how could she sit idly by? Decided to give her a hand. Auntie, don't worry. I'm a rural doctor who doesn't spend much money on treatment. Once I'm cured, I'll give you as much as you want. If it's not cured, I won't take a penny. Is that okay? What? Give as much as you want. If you give less, won't you lose money? This won't work. The old woman may have seen such an unreliable doctor for the first time, and Yu Shushan has also seen such a stubborn patient for the first time. Of course, it's not that Yu Shushan refused to accept full free treatment for her, but rather that Taoism has its own rules. Do not sell the way at a low price, and do not spread the law lightly. It's hard to measure whether you're cheap or not, but if you don't take a penny, it's hard to justify it. This is because Yu Shushan can't say, free, anti, treating your illness is very simple. You only need a few injections, and the medicine is also easy. You have it in your garden. Really. Apart from vegetables, there's only grass in the garden. What kind of medicine is there? The old woman stared at her with puzzled eyes, herbs and herbs, no grass is no medicine. Auntie, I'm not lying to you. It doesn't matter if I don't have money. I'll stay here for two or three days, and the meal will cover the cost of treatment. You won't worry about me eating too much, will you? Yu Shushan joked to her, while grabbing the old woman's right wrist with his left hand and resting the unnamed third finger of his right hand on the inch-by-inch inch position of the old woman's wrist. He couldn't help but furrow his brow slightly. This condition is not mild. The old woman couldn't resist at this moment. The other girls had already talked about it, and I couldn't please her well. Let her treat it. Anyway, I didn't care. When I saw you Shushan, I frowned. Miss, if it's not easy to cure, forget it. Chapter 4 Midnight Strange Sounds You are listening at NovelFull.audio It's okay, auntie. It's not difficult to treat, it'll be fine in a few days. How could you Shushan let his first business go wrong? He had to cure this first patient both vertically and horizontally. She looked outside and saw that it was getting late and the sun was almost setting. Auntie, I'll go to the vegetable garden and find some medicine. I'll stay at your house tonight, you have to take care of my food. Yu Shushan knew that if he wanted this old woman to obediently submit, he would have to use her kindness and a little provocation. Sure enough. Look at what you're saying, it seems like you don't know how to treat illnesses, and Auntie just doesn't care about your food. 
Yu Shishan really found many herbs in the vegetable fields and by the small river, such as pearl grass, sea sand, motherwort, summer withered ball, bitter berry eggs, and more than ten other herbs. I washed each one thoroughly in the stream, pinched it with my hands on both sides, and brought it back. At this point, the old woman had already prepared the food and served it on the small wooden table. Miss, thank you for bothering me. There isn't much delicious food to entertain you. I'm really sorry, just make do with it. The old woman arranged the dishes and greeted her with some shame. Wow! It's so abundant, how can two people eat it? Thank you, auntie. Yu Shishan did not pretend to be in a posture, but looked at the four dishes and one soup on the table to express his satisfaction. A bowl of steamed bacon, a bowl of steamed eggs, a bowl of fried pickled Chinese cabbage with garlic sprouts, a bowl of fried shrimp with Chinese chives, a bowl of agric winter melon soup. I can't finish it, I really can't finish it. Yu Shishan is at the Lingtian Temple, and his daily meals with his master, Daoist Chengshu, are very simple. After all, there are only two disciples, and most of the time, they just eat noodles, usually plain noodles. Eating rice is like having one dish and one soup, making too much is also a waste. Although Taoism is different from Buddhism, it does not avoid meat and meat, and cannot help but marry. But for those who practice Taoism, they do not focus on the desire for food and drink, but rather on maintaining a calm and calm mind. So, Yu Shishan's meals in the temple are light and simple, usually not as abundant as four dishes, one soup, three meat dishes, and two vegetables. Auntie, the dishes you cook are really delicious. Your craftsmanship is much stronger than my master's. Yu Shishan may have been tired and hungry, but with a different taste and the high dot quality rice grown by his aunt herself, his appetite was particularly good. After eating a whirlwind, he was very happy. The old woman was also very happy to see the girl eating happily. When the farmer treated guests, she said that the food and drink were good. In the evening, Yu Shishan washed the pot in the kitchen, overcooked the herbs, poured them out, and boiled them again with water. Boil for half an hour until it turns into a small dark green bowl. Yu Shishan took out a small porcelain bottle, pulled out the stopper, and poured some light yellow powder into the soup. This is the Ichi powder prepared by Lin Tianguan himself. After the old woman had taken a shower and entered the bedroom, Yu Shishan brought in the medicinal soup, Andy, you should drink this bowl of medicine first, and then I will treat your illness. Really treat it. It's troublesome just forget it. No trouble, no trouble. Yu Shishan is like coaxing a well-behaved baby, just get a few stitches and it'll be fine. Take a nap and you'll be half better tomorrow. The old woman half believed and half doubted, took the medicinal soup and drank it. This herb had not been processed before. Although Yu Shishan had boiled it for a while, it still tasted bitter and difficult to drink, but the most fearless thing for the farmers was bitterness. Auntie, lie down, close your eyes, just pretend. Just pretend you're asleep, don't move around. The old woman also cooperated and lay down according to her words. The girl was kind hearted, so how could she resist and make her feel embarrassed? Yu Shishan took out the needle pouch and followed it from right to top, rushing towards the door, returning, waterway, the Jew, Tian Shu, Zhang Men, and then from left to bottom at twelve acupoints including Xiaowan, Shuang Yu, Yinjiao, Zhongzhu, Shermen, and Guan Yuan. He selected gold needles and inserted them in sequence, with varying depths and angles of penetration. After the golden needle was inserted, Yu Shishan rubbed his hands together and warmed them up. He then used the Hunyuan Wuji skill and pressed his palms towards the old woman's lower abdomen. The internal power is slowly infused, pulling the descendant's bag that the old woman is falling down, and gradually moving upwards. The old woman had been ill for a long time and fell seriously. It took Yu Shushan half an hour to restore her descendant's bags. I expend a lot of internal energy and sweat like beads from my temples. Taking a brief rest, Yu Shushan took out a nourishing pill and stuffed it into the old woman's mouth. 
he secretly took a deep breath in his heart, losing a lot. This tonic is worth thousands of yuan, my dear. Smoked meat and shrimp are not delicious. Then, take out the ichi powder and pour it into a medicine bowl, mixed with the medicine paste, twisted it into a medicine ball, and hung it on a golden needle. After busy with these measures, it took two or three hours, and by then, the old woman had fallen asleep, Yushushan returned to another bedroom, which was her son's and daughter in law's room, neatly organized. Yushushan was exhausted enough to walk more than seventy miles, exhausted his energy, treated his aunt's illness, and exhausted his internal strength. At this moment, he was as tired as mud on a beach. Lying on the bed, lazy to turn off the light, he buried his head in sleep. In a daze, a strange sound was heard, and Yushushan woke up in a dream and sat up. The incandescent light remained on, and it was estimated that midnight had passed. At this moment, the moonlight outside the window was faint, the starry river was sparse, and the rice fields had already been harvested, leaving only piles of haystacks in the field. At this moment, Autumn Insect also closed her mouth, silent and peaceful, with the distant cry of a night owl that was almost imperceptible. Is it really an illusion in one's own sleep? The strange sound is gone. After a moment of confusion, Yushushan turned off the light and then leaned back onto the bed, feeling completely drowsy for a moment. Duck. 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 This slight yet very clear sound rang out again. Yushushan listened attentively this time and sat up again in the darkness, this voice is really strange. Pay attention to the west, it seems to be in the east, looking far away and feeling close. It is really looking forward and then back, floating and flickering, vaguely and intermittently, and blurry. What kind of ghost is this? Yushushan crossed his knees on the bed, flipping his fingertips with both hands, and drawing a talisman with his two fingers in mid-air, scattering into the air without any movement. What's going on? Yushushan simply used the secret technique of breaking the delusion of divine light, his eyes shining brightly, emitting a five-inch long seven-colored light. He scanned the room and outside, but saw nothing. What a strange thing! Yushushan took out a magic tool bag from his backpack on the bedside chair, reached for a wooden box, took out a piece of incense, and lit it with a lighter. This finger-thick black fragrance burns and releases a thin white smoke, straight upwards. Yushushan carefully observed the white smoke and did not find any discoloration or distortion, these three element righteous fragrance can best distinguish between in, evil, and ghostly auras. Whenever there is a single point, the three element righteous fragrance will change color and distort, indicating direction. Despite using all the means, Yushushan didn't understand what was going on. Anyway, as long as it wasn't caused by ghosts, it was fine. After calculating the time, I woke up and went to the next door. I took the golden needle from the old woman's body and went back to sleep. The next day, Yushushan woke up and hurriedly went to see the therapeutic effect of his aunt. He rubbed off the bed, put on his shoes, and pushed open the door. Last night, he was disturbed by strange noises all night, and had a bit of poor sleep. He yawned with one hand and pulled the door open with the other. He saw the old woman carrying a bucket, ready to go out. Ah yo! My big lady! Put it down quickly, quickly! Scared, Yushushan screamed and screamed loudly, what's going on? The old woman has a bewildered expression on her face. It's okay. It's okay. Yushushan saw that the bucket was still dry, patting his small chest and pulling off the shoulder pole of his aunt. If you bring back a load of water, I'll have been busy last night in vain. Girl, I fetch water every day. It's okay, besides, you've cured me. You're such a miracle doctor, I feel like I'm ten years younger. Like shedding a big burden. People are much lighter. My dear aunt, you are only temporarily recovering and have no stability at all. If you immediately do heavy physical work and put in a lot of effort, it will fall down again, like there is no cure. These days, you just lie down and sit, and I'll do the rest, 
how can this work? You're a guest, how can you do household chores? Where can an old woman be willing to rely? Letting guests work is a shameful thing in the countryside. Why not? It's only natural for me to eat and work. If you feel guilty, I'll stay at your house for a month for free once you recover from your illness. Yu Shushan snatched the pole and bucket, and walked out of the house with just a few steps. Chapter 5 Good Feng Shui in this place You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The water in the creek is clear and bottomless, slightly filled with heat. There are small shrimp and weed ear fish chasing on the sandy bottom. Yu Shushan put down the bucket, bent down at the edge of Shir Che's stream, scooped up half a bucket of water with the bucket, washed his face with both hands, and simply rinsed his mouth before splashing the water into the grass behind him. Fill two more buckets with water, hang a pole, and pick them up, Yu Shushan was in the Ling Tian temple, and she carried a lot of water. Although her master Chongxu favored her, he couldn't get used to her. Since the age of ten, he began teaching her how to do laundry, cook, fetch water, and grow vegetables. Everything she could do was not allowed to be idle. A burden of over sixty pounds was not a burden for Yu Shushan, who had achieved the ultimate martial arts of Hunyuan. With just a few steps, he carried it onto the riverbank. When looking up, a red sun rises from the eastern mountains, and thousands of auspicious mists appear one after another. The autumn forest becomes less lush, and the red leaves blush, making it incredibly beautiful for a moment. Yu Shushan suddenly froze for a moment, quickly put down the bucket, turned around to look at the left and right hills, then carried the mountain range and looked towards the flat area, in the distance, the mountains are clear and beautiful, with a peak like a pen. Nearby, there is a hill of farmland, like a new moon. It is suspected that it was filled with a pond, approaching the field, there was a rise of more than ten meters, forming a rolling wheat field, like a long desk. Looking back on both sides, the two peaks are facing each other, resembling ingots. This village is located among the ingots. This is an excellent feng shui yin place. Yu Shushan secretly sighed at the wonder of creation, giving birth to such a perfect land condition. Girl. You're not used to carrying water, let me do it. The old woman saw Yu Shushan putting down a bucket and carrying a pole in the yard, thinking that she was too weak and weak to carry a load of water. It's okay. It's okay. Yu Shushan grabbed the pole and quickly carried the water back into the kitchen, the old woman pulled cilantro, green onions, and small cabbage in the garden. The water in the pot was already boiling, and the bowl on the stove had already been fried with golden and yellow poached eggs. The homemade eggs were scorched and fragrant, making people drool. The old woman placed noodles in the pot, washed and cut the scallions and coriander, and tore the cabbage into strips for later use, coincidentally, the dried noodles are also cooked until they are soft and tender. Use bamboo chopsticks to scoop them out of a bowl, cover the head of coriander, scallions, and small cabbage, and add seasonings one by one. Heat another spoonful of hot oil in the pot and pour it on top. Suddenly, the oil coriander, fragrant noodles, and seasoning are stimulated, and two golden poached eggs are added. Can this bowl of noodles taste delicious? After breakfast, Yu Shushan forcefully pushed her back to bed and inserted a golden needle into her acupoint again, stimulating her internal strength and unleashing her potential. At the same time, he was afraid that the lady would be restless and restless, so he decided to puncture her sleeping acupoint in the back of her brain with a golden needle. Cover the door yourself, go out to the vegetable field on the ridge after the autumn harvest, and then find some herbs to come back. As I walked into a rice field not far away, I suddenly smelled a muddy and fishy smell, which made me somewhat surprised. When the autumn harvest was over, Yu Shushan looked around and found that no one was plowing around. Moreover, the smell of soil was not like new mature soil. It had a faint smell of staleness. Aunt Jo. Is Aunt Jo at home? Yu Shushan was pondering when he suddenly heard someone shouting nearby, which startled him. A woman in her thirties ate the yard of her aunt and, for some reason, 
was breaking into the inner room. This is not good. Auntie was sleeping soundly, with gold needles inserted all over her body. She was intruded by this woman, and something might have happened. Hello. That sister. In. Law, Grandma Jo is not at home. She went to the village to buy salt and will be back later. Yu Shushan didn't bother looking for herbs and hurriedly called out to the young woman to come back quickly. The woman heard that Aunt Jo was not at home, so she stopped and turned around. In rural areas, if her master was not at home, it was not advisable to enter someone's house. This taboo should still be avoided. Seeing Yu Shushan walking back quickly, I couldn't help but wonder, little sister, what kind of person are you, Aunt Jo? Yu Shushan came with his mouth open, she is my aunt. My grandmother knew she was not in good health and asked me to bring some supplements yesterday. My aunt insisted on keeping me here for a day or two. She had just eaten noodles and went to the village to buy salt and vinegar. She had just left. Oh, then I'll come over later. Hee <laughs> hee, little sister is so beautiful. Sister-in-law has a great figure. Wearing clothes on her is like a fashion show. Ouch. The woman twisted her buttocks a few times and looked up and down on herself, my little sister is really good at talking. When she was young, she was pretty good. Everyone said I had a good clothes rack, but now I can't do it anymore. I've gained weight, it's much worse, uh. -huh. The woman happily shook her hands and walked back with twists and turns. Yu Shushan also felt relieved, suddenly, I thought to myself that there must be small shops and pharmacies among hundreds of households in this village. Why bother searching for herbs? It would be much easier for me to go to the pharmacy to get a few pairs of medicine. Turning around, I closed the door again, left the yard, walked a few dozen meters down a small path, and walked up the main road in the village. Most of the villagers live on both sides of this road, and it's only after eight o'clock that the men and women in the village have breakfast. It's time to go out and do some work, and it's lively. Yu Shushan searched all the way and found two grocery stores selling tobacco, alcohol, sidelines, hardware, a biotech shop buying fertilizer seeds and rat poison, and a breakfast bun shop. However, he didn't see any pharmacies or clinics. She stopped a woman in her forties, who was holding two chestnut-colored goats in one hand and preparing to go down to the field with a hoe in the other. Auntie, by the way, is there a pharmacy in the village that can buy medicine? The woman glanced at Yu Shushan and asked in confusion, Who are you? Who are you buying medicine for? I am a relative of Aunt Jio in the west of the village. She has a common problem and bought it for her. I turned out to be a relative of Aunt Jio's family. That's it. Aunt Jio's illness has been dragging on for too long, and I'm afraid it's rare for her to recover. Sigh, it's not that she didn't have the money to cause trouble. Little girl, you can come with me. The woman led the sheep towards a small alley three or four feet wide, followed closely by Yu Shushan. Turning two corners, there was a two-dot story villa with a red brick and white porcelain surface. Uncle Lu. Uncle Lu. Someone is buying medicine. The woman shouted a few times towards the villa, just come in. The dog is tied up and won't bite people. The courtyard door in front of the villa was open, and a deep voice came from inside, Little girl, don't be afraid. Uncle Lu is very easy to talk to. Let's go in. Thank you, Auntie. I'm inside. Yu Shushan greeted the woman and walked into the yard. The yard was very clean, with marble tiles on the ground and some flowers and plants planted around. A black dog was tied under a citrus tree. When Yu Shushan came in, he let out a low growl and then lay down again, drooping his eyelids. Those who run pharmacies at home often have people coming and going, and dogs are also commonplace, too lazy to bark. The door of the villa is made of glass, with a wooden plaque on top and gold lettering on a black background, reading, Lu Fuxian Clinic. On both sides are some dark red paper couplets, hoping that there will be fewer illnesses in the world. 
it would be better to put medicine and dust on them. This villa stands out like a flock of chickens in the village, and the medicine on the shelf doesn't seem to be dusty. It looks very attractive. Yu Shushan pushed open the glass door and entered. On one side of the hall was a row of wooden traditional Chinese medicine cabinets, and in front of them was a row of glass counters with some western medicine boxes placed inside. An old man inside the counter was pounding medicine in a mortar with an iron pestle when he heard the door ring and looked up at Yu Shushan. What medicine should I buy? Yu Shushan picked up the ballpoint pen on the counter and wrote down the names of sixteen traditional Chinese medicines on a piece of paper, the old man took a glance, are you right? The dosage of these four or five medicines is clearly three or four times higher than normal medication. This prescription cannot be taken. Yu Shushan smiled, sir, are these five herbs wild or artificially cultivated? The old man was suddenly stunned and stared at Yu Shushan in surprise, becoming mute and unable to speak again. Pour the crushed medicine from the mortar into a large bowl. The medicine has a strong pungent odor, and Yu Shushan must have added awakening and anti-evil drugs such as camphor and realgar to it. The old man picked up the prescription again, put on his glasses, and prepared to take the medicine. Lao Lu. We need to talk about, first come, first served. You'd better prepare it for us first, I won't miss your money. On the other side of the hall was a simple living room, with a row of sofas against the wall. In front of the sofas was a coffee table, and on this side were several wooden chairs. A tall and thin man in his thirties sat on the sofa, and it was him who was speaking. The old man's face felt a bit awkward upon hearing these words, Mr., please finish your work first. I'm not in a hurry. Yu Shushan busily said, All right. All right. Miss, go sit over there for a while and enjoy the tea. I'll be ready soon. Yu Shushan found a chair to sit down, and his divine light flashed over the tall and thin man across from him. This man had a pale face, an appearance of excessive smoking and drinking, and insufficient sleep. However, his eyes were open and closed, but they flickered with shrewdness and vigilance. At the same time, Yu Shushan smelled a faint smell of stale soil, which was somewhat familiar. Is this person? Chapter 6 Ghosts at Midnight You are listening at NovelFull.audio The old man quickly mixed the crushed medicine powder into medicine mud with baijiu, rolled it into several medicine strips with thick little fingers, placed them in a wooden plate, walked out of the door, and put them on the wall to dry. Returning, I quickly grabbed three pairs of Yu Shushan's prescription, wrapped it up, and calculated the price. Yu Shushan paid the money and as he passed by the yard, he looked thoughtfully at the medicinal strips drying on the wall. He quickly returned to Aunt Jio's house with the medicine bag in hand and saw Aunt Jio still sleeping soundly, so he took the golden needle. Find a pottery jar under the kitchen, wash it clean with water, add water, squat on the lotus root coal stove, unpack a bag of Chinese medicinal materials, pour it into the jar, and use chopsticks to stir a few times. Yu Shushan saw that it was still early, so he picked up a bucket and watered the newly planted radishes and lettuce in the vegetable field by the roadside. After returning, the room was filled with the fragrance of traditional Chinese medicine, and the medicine was almost cooked. I found a clean big bowl and sifted out the black medicinal juice. Aunt Jio woke up in the bedroom, feeling regretful for oversleeping. When she saw Yu Shushan carrying medicinal soup in, she realized that she was treating her illness. Aunt Jio drank medicinal soup and had a few casual conversations with Yu Shushan before getting up and going to the village. Yu Shushan came back to the field filled with straw to verify his suspicion. Seeing no one paying attention around, he lifted the pile of straw in the field. Good guy. Sure enough. Under the straw lay piles of freshly dug soil. Yu Shushan grabbed a handful and placed it under his nose, smelling a stale earthy smell. Aunt Jio bought a pile of meat and vegetables from the village, and had four dishes and one soup at noon. Yu Shushan was so happy that she didn't want to eat. 
She tossed around for most of the night and went back to her room to catch a nap. Yu Shushan refused to let Aunt Jo cook for dinner and made do with it, in the evening, Yu Shushan checked Aunt Jo's body again, and the results were surprisingly good. Perhaps due to the strong physical fitness of rural people, the medicinal and therapeutic effects were perfectly exerted. Yu Shushan changed the depth of several acupoints and stimulated his internal strength to stimulate the contraction function of his pelvic floor muscles. It was not until nearly 10 o'clock that he completed the treatment technique and arranged for Anchio to drink the decoction and let her fall asleep. Yu Shushan walked out of the house and stood by the fence in the yard, taking a break. At this moment, a new moon rises to the east mountain, with sparse stars and rivers to the west. The blue sky is as clear as a wash, the evening breeze is like a bath, and the night is as clear as a dream. Yu Shushan looked at the rice fields over 200 meters away. The moonlight is not clear, and the average person's eyesight cannot see that far, but Yu Shushan is not among them. She could clearly see things within a few hundred meters. Three black clothed people, bowing their bodies, walked through several piles of straw and quickly disappeared. The tall and thin figure among them was the one in Uncle Lu's pharmacy in the village. Yu Shushan knew very well what these people were doing, but as a young girl from his own family, it seemed inappropriate to intervene openly. As for reporting to the police or something, she is not very good at it. She has been observing the world for a long time and is not clear about the worldly wisdom in the mundane world. Yu Shushan thought for a moment and came up with a plan, but couldn't help but laugh. Aunt Jo was already sound like thunder, sleeping soundly in bed. When she returned to her bedroom, Yu Shushan prepared some necessary props and, at the same time, perked up her ears to listen to the strange sound of duck. Duck, coming from underground. Until around three o'clock in the late night, the strange sound of excavation suddenly disappeared, Yu Shushan knew that this had already been connected, and it wouldn't be long before those three people would quickly withdraw. It was time for her to appear. The rice fields after the autumn harvest are very dry, but in late September at midnight, a layer of white frost and dew condenses on the dry straw. A large hole had already been dug out of the haystack, and a person's head poked out from the hole. Looking left and right, there was no abnormality. A short and sturdy man in black then peeled open a pile of grass, revealing a soil hole about three feet long. At the bottom of the pitch black soil hole, there were occasional flashes of light. Not far from the soil cave, there is a thick wooden stake nailed to it, with a thumb thick rope tied to it. The man in black pulled the rope up and down three times. A little red light drew three circles below, and then the black clothed man began to pull the rope upwards. The rope was about thirty meters long, and a dirty snake skin bag filled with things hung from below. The man in black took off the snake skin bag hanging on the rope, set it aside, grabbed two handfuls of dry straw to cover it, and then put down the rope again, go back and forth three times, hang three snake skin bags filled with things, the fourth time he was suspended was the tall and thin man in black. The last one to come up was a short old man with a hunched back and bent waist, like a large mole rat. The three of them quickly covered the soil hole with straw and piled it up into a pile. There was nothing unusual outside. At this moment it was almost dawn, and the three of them had cleared the ground and were ready to leave. Where are the goods? Where are they hidden? The little old man asked, and the short and strong man was taken aback and suddenly stuttered. Where are the goods? Didn't the three bags just cover under the straw? Just now, there was a tense operation, and now I remember it's not right. Did you accidentally cover it all in the haystack just now? The three of them pushed and planed again, breaking down the newly stacked haystack in a mess. Still nothing. Damn it. I just let it go. Ghost. Ghost. The short and strong man suddenly screamed, and the little old man raised his hand and slapped him in the face. Do you want to die? It's useless. Really? Really a ghost? Ah! The short and strong man let out a strange cry, 
turned around and ran away. The little old man and the tall and thin man turned around and looked back, suddenly losing half of their souls and souls. On another straw stack three feet away, a female ghost dressed in white stood on one leg, with a disheveled hair and a blood-red tongue over two feet long, sticky and dripping with saliva. Her hands were stretched out, and on ten stiff white fingers, two or three inches of black nails were brushed together. A een seeping sound rang out. Also. I, life. Come. The female ghost suddenly jumped up straight and rushed towards the two tomb robbers. The little old man was an old thief who reacted very quickly. He rolled on the spot, drove away six or seven feet, got up, spread his feet, and ran wildly towards the village. And this tall and thin man, startled and foolish, then wrapped his cold and wet tongue around his neck, immediately took his breath off his back, collapsed on his back, and lay motionless in the rice field. I can't scare you to death, shameless tomb raider. Yu Shushan didn't chase after him either. He spat out a red cloth strip soaked in rice soup from his mouth and removed the black paper nails from his fingers. Fold the loose long hair back and tie it with a monkey skin band on your wrist, Yu Shushan was afraid of dirtying his new Taoist robe. He rolled up the sleeves of his white Taoist robe, lifted three snake skin bags containing cultural relics and antiques one by one, pulled the hooks on the rope, and hung them one by one, letting them down into the dirt hole. There's no way. Tomorrow morning, the early villagers will surely notice something unusual in this rice field, with scattered straw, freshly dug soil, and black holes in the soil. I must know what happened. If these bags of things are not put down and seen by the villagers, they will definitely become greedy. To some extent, if they are not put down, it will inevitably lead to the loss of cultural relics and antiques, causing incalculable losses to the country, put these things back into the cave, put away the ropes, and most villagers would never dare to go inside. They would only choose to report to the police. If the police enter, they will naturally report to the higher authorities, and the cultural relics department will take over, so there is no risk. After putting three snake skin bags back into the soil cave, Yushushan coiled up the rope and hid it in another haystack, looking back at the tall and thin man lying on the ground, he was the one who was preparing medicinal incense in the village during the day. Seeing that his breath was decent, Yushushan grabbed a few straws and tied them into two pieces of grass ropes, tying this person's hands and feet together. He expected that he would never be able to struggle and would definitely be captured by the villagers. Everything was done, and Yu Shushan patted the soil and grass leaves on his hand. Seeing that there were no more omissions, he took a step back to Aunt Joe's house, suddenly, my right foot was hit by something hard, and when I looked down, I saw an inconspicuous little thing lying in the dry and hard rice field. What is this thing? Chapter 7 Finding a Job You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yu Shushan bent down and raised his hand to pick it up. At this moment, the sky was about to brighten, with a faint dawn in the east. In the faint light, Yu Shushan saw a wooden black lacquer gourd two or three inches long, with a jade piece over an inch wide and two inches long tied to its neck. It's so close. Fortunately, I didn't step on this thin piece of jade just now. Otherwise, that would be an unforgivable crime. At this moment, the crowing of chickens kept coming and going, and there were occasional barks of dogs in the darkness. The constant lights lit up, and the sleeping mountain village began to awaken, immediately becoming lively. Yu Shushan came to the earth cave with this object, intending to throw it into the cave. However, he thought that the cave was over twenty meters deep, and if he threw it into it, he would have to smash it into pieces. Just as I was about to go to the haystack to get ropes, I heard someone in the village start walking. Diligent rural people, who wake up early, water, look for vegetables, and rush to work, once seen by someone, it will be troublesome. Yu Shushan thought about it and let it go. This is still a precious cultural relic and antique, and he casually carried it into his arms, I hurried back to Aunt Joe's house, locked the door, slipped back to the bedroom, took off my clothes and shoes, got into bed, 
and slept again. Waking up again, it was almost eight o'clock, and Aunt Chio had already prepared breakfast. After washing up, Yu Shushan had eaten pork noodle soup. Her aunt was already carrying a rake and going to the field to weed. Aunt Chio, don't rush to work yet. I'll tell you something. Yu Shushan quickly stopped Aunt Chio, don't worry. You rest at the top of the house. The sun is still scorching, just go loosen the soil and pull the grass. We'll talk about it later if we have anything to do. Oh no. I can't do it. Aunt Chio, I'm leaving now. I've given you some precautions, so I can hurry. Didn't you say you wanted to stay for a month? After treating my illness, how could you just leave? Aunt Chio became anxious and quickly put down the rake head, turning around, don't be too happy for now. Your illness has only temporarily stabilized, it's still a long way from getting better. So, I have to tell you something, you must remember. Firstly, within this month, please do not use excessive force and do not exceed 40 pounds when picking things. Secondly, after drinking these three pairs of medicines, follow the prescription I wrote and then catch the three pairs of medicines. Don't forget it. Thirdly, if possible, it's best to buy some dog meat stewed with black beans and eat it once or twice. That's it, even if you say too much, I'm afraid you won't remember. Even if you remember, you may not necessarily follow suit you Shushan finished speaking and handed the prescription in his hand to Antio. Antio, you must take this medicine. You can't save anything, it only costs a few tens of yuan. If your illness relapses again, it will really be difficult to cure. Girl. I remember, but I. Aunt Joe's old eyes were filled with tears as she plunged into the bedroom, only to hear the cabinet door creaking. Yu Shushan shook his head and walked into the other bedroom. He packed his things, put them in his backpack, and picked them up and carried them on his back. Aunt Joe broke in and put something into Yu Shushan's pocket. Miss, don't underestimate it. I am truly grateful to you. I never imagined that this old illness could be cured. I really don't know how to thank you. You should stay at my house for a few more days, and I will feel a little more at ease. After Aunt Chio finished speaking, tears streamed down her face and she grabbed Yu Shushan's hand, Yu Shushan quietly took out what was in his pants pocket, which was a hard piece folded from a plastic bag. With just two fingers pinching it, he knew it was the private string that Aunt Chio had accumulated on a daily basis. It was mixed in softness and hardness, and could be anything but a hole. This could be Aunt Chio's entire wealth, so he had to take the opportunity to support Aunt Chio to speak and put it back into her pocket. Auntie Chio, don't worry, I'm still a student. This is a monthly vacation and I don't have much time. I have to go back to school. After the big winter vacation, I will keep you here for ten and a half days. Don't blame me for not leaving. The food you cook is so delicious, look. In these two days, I have gained a lot of weight. Look at what you're saying. Aunt Joe's family is poor and doesn't have anything good to entertain you. She even asked you to do this and that, and I have nowhere to hide my old face. After finally bidding farewell to Aunt Joe, who was grateful for her kindness, Yu Shushan boarded a truck carrying vegetables from the village to the county town and finally left Yuanbao village amidst the turbulence. Jiangning City, a prefecture-level city in Huainan province, is a well-known second-tier city in the inland region, highlighting its important location due to its culture and transportation hub. Jiangning Sanatorium is well-known throughout the country, covering an area of over 100 acres with complete facilities and beautiful scenery, located in the west of Jiangning City. The north gate of Jiangning Sanatorium faces a pedestrian street, and on the left is a bulletin board with some job advertisements posted inside. It has been three days since Yu Shushan arrived in Jiangning City. Two days earlier, she set up a fortune-telling and fortune-telling stall on the pedestrian street. She originally thought that with her ability in divination and prediction, she could help people solve problems, guide them in the right direction, and make a living. The result is that she is too naive. As passers-by saw her stall, 
someone threw a lot of 5 or 10 yuan, just for the sake of helping her when she was young and in need. But she was not rewarded for her meritorious service, and most of her requests for someone to take a divination or test a character were laughed off. Too young, no one believes she knows these tricks. This is not acceptable. I am not a monk who begged for alms, we are a self-sufficient Taoist. In a fit of anger, Yu Xuxian closed the stall, picked up his backpack, and realized that I couldn't do mature work. Can't I take on another job? In fact, she really can't work yet. Although she also has an ID card, she is only 16 years old and still a minor. Who dares to use her? But she really can't do it if she doesn't find something to do. Her master sent her down the mountain and only gave her 500 yuan as raw capital at that time. I spent more than 130 yuan to buy traditional Chinese medicine for Aunt Jio in Yuanbao village. Later, I took a taxi to eat and accommodation, and all the way to Jiangning city, there were only less than 30 yuan left for 500 yuan. If you don't cause trouble, there's really a chance of enduring hunger and camping on the streets. At this moment, Yu Xuxian was carrying a backpack and looking at those messy job advertisements in front of the bulletin board. Most of the recruitment here is not suitable for novices like Yu Xuxian. Yu Xuxian was watching anxiously when suddenly he heard a voice behind him. Sister, are you looking for something to do? Yu Xuxian turned around and saw a woman in her thirties. She knew immediately that she was also from a rural area who came to work in the city. Yeah. Do you have anything to introduce, big sister? There's no problem with introducing work, but the girl can help the old lady first. My old lady is sick and has to hurry back as soon as possible. She can't take a leave for a while. Girl. Can you give my older sister a few days shift first? I'm not at your disadvantage, I'll give you 200 yuan a day. You can stay in my dormitory and eat my meal card, okay? Is there such a good thing? Do you know how difficult it is for big sister's job? Yu Xuxian asked cautiously, it's just a cleaning job, what's the difficulty? Just work hard and be quick. I have been working for seven or eight years, and relatively speaking, it is still very easy. If you are willing, come with me and I will introduce you to the specific matters, thank you, big sister. Actually, sister Li's job is not complicated. She is responsible for about a quarter of the environmental sanitation work in a garden in Jiangning Sanatorium. One is to clean the fallen leaves and garbage on the pedestrian walkway, and the other is to wipe the pavilions and chairs in the area. There is only about three to four hours of work per day, and if you are clumsy, you can finish it in three hours with plenty of free time. Miss Li finished introducing her work, gave the keys and meal cards to Yu Xuxian in the dormitory, and drove back to the countryside on her own. Yu Xuxian went to the dormitory first and took a look. It was a single room of four or five square meters, with a public bathroom outside. The conditions were not bad because today's work had already been completed and belonged to Yu Xuxian. It will start tomorrow. Yu Xuxian has developed excellent personal survival skills and strong adaptability in the observation. After using Li's meal card and having a meal in the staff canteen of the sanatorium, he returned to his dormitory early because cleaning work required him to wake up early. When there were few people, Yu Xuxian went back to his room and practiced a few rounds of Hunyuan Wuji Gong before resting early. The garden design of Jiangning Sanatorium is very exquisite, with four seasonal flowers, small bridges and flowing water, pavilions and towers, all of which are complete. Because on the first day, with Miss Li's detailed explanation, Yu Xuxian woke up at around 5 o'clock and cleaned his area before 6 o'clock. Take people's money and help them alleviate disasters. Because in the sanatorium, the people who come to recuperate are either veteran cadres or successful individuals from wealthy businesses, all of whom are a group of people who value health and fear death, as the sky brightened, the garden became lively, with people practicing in the morning everywhere. Around 7 o'clock, Yu Xuxian felt that his area had been cleaned up almost completely. He put aside his tools and took advantage of the fresh morning air. 
As he descended the mountain, he couldn't stretch his fists and feet, making his heart itch. Find a place with few people, under a large camphor tree. This is a remote corner of the garden where few people come. Yushushan unfolded his fists and feet, casually stretching out the thirty-six Tai Chi postures. Just as he finished using them, he heard a voice, little girl. You use Tai Chi wrong. Chapter 8 Collecting an Old Apprentice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yu Shushan finished his final move, his breath was steady, and his body stood like a pine tree. When he turned around to look at the sound, he was a tall and powerful old man, at least eighty years old, with a sharp and sharp sword-like force rushing towards him. Although wearing slightly whitewashed military uniforms, the characteristics of that soldier, weathered by time, cannot be worn away. This is a true warrior. Undoubtedly, it is the majesty of Tiger Old. Yu Shushan looked at the old man standing with a kind face and pinching his waist, and felt a good impression. This old man had come all the way through morning exercises. Hello Grandpa. What's wrong with my Tai Chi please advise me. Ha ha. I just saw that you are good at Tai Chi, so I took a few more glances and just felt that your moves were not right. The meaning of Tai Chi is to use softness to overcome hardness, seemingly slow but actually fast. However, in some parts of the routine you use, it seems to be too forceful and use too much force. I don't know if that's right. I also know Tai Chi look at the difference between the moves I use and yours. This old man seems to have a bit of an old mischievous vibe, intending to show off his Tai Chi skills. Great. It's perfect to learn from Grandpa. The old man took off his old military casual clothes, and Yu Shushan reached out to take them. He stood aside and watched the old man stretch out his legs, shake his arms, and move his muscles and joints. Then put on a posture. The old man starts with the first move, then the wild horse splits its mane, the white crane spreads its wings, embraces its knees and steps forward, waves its pipa, and continues to turn around to move the blocking hammer, as if sealed off. Cross hands, close the move. These twenty-four style Tai Chi moves are like flowing clouds and flowing water, completed in one go, with a balance of speed, firmness, and softness, truly pleasing to the eye. Grandpa has at least thirty or forty years of skill in practicing good boxing. The old man punched down, panting and sweating profusely, but burst into laughter. The girl is really insightful. I learned Tai Chi when I was in my fifties, and now it's been over thirty years. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I'm losing some breath. You're not old, you're not breathing properly when using your fists. If you manage your breathing properly and complete your moves, you won't be panting. Is there anything else about this? Yu Shushan placed the old man's military coat on the stone bench next to the flower tree, and he put it back on the shelf again. Look. This white crane has bright wings. When the gesture reaches this position, it's like exhaling turbid air. When it turns to lift the knee, it's like contracting the lower abdomen, inhaling into the chest, and accumulating strength to wait. The old man couldn't help but quickly spread out his moves, following Yu Shushan's method, adjusting his breathing method and slowly dancing along. In fact, Tai Chi is divided into two types. One is a Taoist method of practicing internal breathing, with a total of 36 moves, and the other is a layman's performance boxing method of moving muscles and bones, with a total of 24 moves. The old man, of course, learned secular moves. Although he had practiced them for thirty or forty years and was proficient in the moves, he did not match the breathing techniques of his inner family. In fact, he was only mediocre but not very useful. Yu Shushan had just taught a few moves when he saw a woman in her forties, dressed in simple and refreshing clothes. She walked over and said, Old man, it's time to have breakfast. There are still many tests to be done in the morning. It's getting late, come back tomorrow morning to practice. Yu Shushan also cleverly accepted his moves, tidied up his cleaning tools, and prepared to leave. Girl. Don't leave, 
I see you haven't had breakfast yet. You taught me kung fu, I'll treat you to breakfast. Grandpa laughed and said, we are learning from each other and making progress together. I won't bother you with breakfast anymore. How can we do that? Are you treating me like an old man with dim eyes and no sense of propriety? Your teaching method is very effective. Besides, there's no way I can teach half of my disciples. This breakfast is like a meal for an old student like me, uh -huh. The forty-year-old woman, seeing the old man with great interest, was very knowledgeable and helped out. The little girl is fine. She just had breakfast, and Mr. Liang likes to talk to young people. Exactly. Exactly. Young people should be more cheerful, girl, let's go together. The old man put on military casual clothes and led the way out of the garden, but Yu Shushan couldn't refuse anymore. I had to go to the nutrition restaurant at the sanatorium with that woman. The sanatorium immortal restaurant is divided into two sizes, with the elderly entering a small restaurant on one side, the security guard next to the small restaurant was stunned when he saw Yu Shushan coming with the old man. He didn't dare to speak and dodged aside. The old man turned around and greeted Yu Shushan, come in, come this way. A woman in her forties took a few steps ahead and opened the door to a room. This room is not big, more than ten square meters, very clean and tidy, with only one dining table inside. Come, sit down. The old man pointed across from the dining table and sat down on the other side, the woman quickly served breakfast in duplicate and laid it out, a cup of fresh milk, this milk is too fresh and doesn't smell as fishy as milk. It should be specially provided by the self-raised sika deer in the sanatorium, a bowl of bird's nest and white fungus rice porridge, a basket of donkey meat and scallion buns, two vegetables, two meat dishes, four small plates, marinated quail, salted shrimp, sour lotus root slices, soaked cabbage. It looks like the taste is good. Yu Shushan smiled at the old man and signaled to activate the foodie mode, this is completely different from what Jiu Auntie's family eats, but Yu Shushan's taste is diverse and does not affect her appetite at all. The woman smiled and watched quietly from the side, eating like an old and a small competition. How delightful! In just over ten minutes, the two of them almost finished eating the food in front of them, girl, I'm done eating. And you? I've had enough, thank you grandpa. This last sip of milk can't be wasted, I'll do it. Ha ha. What a good child. The woman brought in two more cups of green tea, and the old man took a sip and touched his stomach, I ate a bit too much today, girl. How about walking with me for a few steps to digest my food? Okay. I'm almost done with today's work and can arrange it freely. An old and a young person left the restaurant and walked slowly along a stone path. Girl, where do you live at home? Who do you have at home? You came out to work at a young age. My family. I haven't been home for ten years, and I don't know what's going on at home. Yu Shushan suddenly came up with a plan and teased the old man. Anyway, her situation is quite special, so it's not a lie. You. Were you kidnapped and deceived? The old man suddenly turned back, I guess so. I left with him in a daze back then, but now he thinks I've eaten too much and kicked me out. Yu Shushan looked innocent and pitiful, speaking half truthfully. Have you ever attended school? No. Yu Shushan shook his head, damn it. Damn it. How could it delay your studies and studies? However, I can recognize the characters. The old man is very strange, how can you recognize characters? That person has no children, but he knows how to treat illnesses. He has many medical books at home and can be considered a local doctor. He taught me how to read and learn medicine from a young age. So it's like this. He's also a pitiful person. The old man walked slowly with his hands behind his back, old man, it's time to go to the therapy room, little girl. Goodbye. A forty-year-old woman followed in the distance, looked at the time, and walked over to remind the elderly. Yu Shushan put the tools back in the tool room and saw that it was only after eight o'clock. 
he wanted to go shopping and felt for the small change left in his pocket. He was interested in whether to drop it or forget it, so as not to encounter the glare of the shop assistant. Returning to Sister Lee's dormitory, feeling bored and helpless, she could play with her phone when she had nothing to do. Yu Shushan is now penniless, not to mention her phone. Autumn milk tea is a luxury. Suddenly, my heart moved and I remembered the little thing I got from the tomb robber at Aunt Jo's residence in Yuanbao village. I pulled on my backpack and dug out the thing inside. I had just taken it out of the tomb and didn't have time to clean it up. I found a piece of rag to wrap it up in Aunt Jo and stuffed it into my backpack. It wasn't until then that I remembered. Open the rag and reveal the three-inch long black lacquered gourd and two finger wide and one finger long jade pieces, covered in dried black mud and dirt, dirty to death. Yu Shushan found a plastic wash basin and brought a basin of clean water. Soak the gourd and jade slices in water together, and after half an hour, find an abandoned toothbrush on the windowsill. First, brush the jade slices back and forth clean. Yu Shushan tried to untie the silk ribbon tied to the neck of the gourd, but after a long time, he couldn't find the knot. Where did he start? This wooden gourd is also quite heavy, surprisingly sinking at the bottom of the water. Yu Shushan pinched the gourd with his fingers and a little bit of force, but it didn't move at all. It seemed that it was well preserved, otherwise it would have been crushed by his own foot that day. The gourd is not rotten, so I decided to brush it with a toothbrush a few times. Surprisingly, not even the paint fell off. After washing it, the gourd's black paint shimmered with oil, which was really beautiful. Gently twisting and twisting the gourd lid with his hand, it remained motionless. Yu Shushan dared not provoke the barbarians. Once it was destroyed, it would be a pity. It may have been soaked for too long, causing the stopper to swell and unable to be pulled out, which is normal. Then, flipping over the jade piece to play with, Yu Shushan didn't understand the quality of the pure white jade. It was just smooth to the touch, warm to the touch, and the quality was probably not too bad. Suddenly, his fingertips felt a slight bump on the jade piece. Yu Shushan quickly approached the piece and couldn't see it very accurately, as if it was a Tai Chi pattern. Because the jade color was integrated and the carving was extremely shallow, he couldn't really notice it without careful consideration. Yu Shushan simply operated the secret method of breaking the delusion of divine light, and his eyes flickered with strange light. At this glance, I looked carefully, this is a yin dot yang fish tai chi diagram with a big finger, and surprisingly, there are lice-sized characters below the diagram, there are still quite a few of these characters, about a hundred of them and the font is ancient and simple, with various shapes. Yu Shushan is basically unfamiliar with them. Breaking the delusion, the divine light cannot hold each other for too long. Anyway, he doesn't recognize the characters. Yu Shushan collected the secret of the divine light and wrapped these two things in a small towel, then put them back in the bag. The next day, the old man waited early under the big camphor tree, waiting for Yu Shushan to teach him the breathing method of Tai Chi, Yu Shushan doesn't mind either. If you get along with this old man, just teach him. He is already in his 80s and 90s, and he can still live for a few more years, which makes him happy. Of course, breakfast was also necessary for her. During this walk to digest, I found out that the old man's surname was Liang, and he was a senior cadre of a considerable rank. As for what rank it was, Yu Shushan didn't know either, but it should be very high. On the third day, Sister Li returned to the sanatorium and Yu Shushan's temporary employment was terminated. Fortunately, Sister Li is a warm dot hearted person. In addition to paying Yu Shushan 400 yuan, she also took Yu Shushan to the property cleaning department of the sanatorium and found her cousin to plead. Sister Li's cousin saw that Yu Shushan was beautiful Nidot catching, and arranged for a cleaning job on the third floor of the back building of the sanatorium, responsible for the hygiene and cleaning of six rooms, as well as changing and washing bedding. Because the three-story small building in the back building is occupied by senior retired cadres and requires young, beautiful, and clean sanitation workers. 
With the guarantee of Sister Li and being a temporary worker, Yu Xuxian reluctantly joined with a monthly salary of 4,800 yuan, which is not low. On the first day of formal work, Yu Xuxian was surprised to find that the old man who taught Tai Chi himself lived in room 001. Chapter 9 First Aid You are listening at NovelFull.audio Both of them were very happy. Yu Xuxian wiped the floor with a mop while chatting with Mr. Liang, a 40-year-old woman surnamed he is Liang Lao's full-time waiter. She cools the freshly cooked traditional Chinese medicine in cold water on the side, Mr. Liang was reading on the sofa, rubbing his chest. This is a luxurious suite with a master bedroom and a second bedroom meeting the living room. Yu Xuxian was washing his mop in the bathroom when he suddenly heard Liang Lao groaning outside, and with a loud bang, something fell to the ground. Not good. The old man has a heart attack, Xiaoya. Xiaoya. Call a doctor quickly. Yu Xuxian hurriedly came out of the bathroom and saw that Liang Lao had collapsed on the floor. Hurriedly working with Aunt He, he lifted Mr. Liang onto the sofa and lay down flat. Yu Xuxian reached out and placed his hand on Mr. Liang's wrist, using his internal strength to probe. After a brief exploration, he noticed that the Shaolin Heart Meridian was weak and weak, while the Pericardium Meridian was very excited, which was a pulse of heart spasms. At this moment, the doctor who happened to be patrolling room 005 heard the exclamation in room 001 and hurried over. The person who came was a doctor in his thirties. Seeing that Mr. Liang had a sudden heart attack, he quickly called the hospital to prepare for emergency treatment. The person asked someone to push an emergency cart. Don't touch him. Once you take him to the emergency room, the patient will definitely die. He has acute heart spasms and must be treated on the spot. It was Yu Xuxian who was speaking, and Liang had a good relationship with her. She didn't want Liang to die in vain in emergency, so she spoke up and stopped him. Who are you? What right do you have to prevent medical emergency? What ability do you have to determine the cause of his illness? You're just a temporary cleaner, why don't you get out of here? At this moment, Mr. Liang's face was blue and purple, and he was about to fall into a coma. However, he spoke with great certainty in difficulty, listen to her. I, I believe her. Liang made his own decision, but several people didn't know what to do. Yu Xuxian dared not delay any longer, took off his coat, and took out the needle bag he had carried with him from the inner lining, unveiling Liang Lao's outer garment, revealing his chest, his underwear couldn't help but lift up. Yu Xuxian saw needles falling like rain. In an instant, more than twenty golden needles were inserted into the acupoints of the Shaoyin meridian and the pericardial meridian in his hands, and his hands were plucked on the needles like playing a chin. Shu. Liang let out a long sigh, and his face gradually turned rosy. I feel much more comfortable, um. The doctors and nurses in the room, as well as the recuperators and caregivers in the neighboring room, were all stunned. In these short three to five minutes, a person was rescued from the brink of death and regained consciousness to speak. This dazzling set of golden needle techniques is simply amazing and unheard of. Yu Xuxian breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that the needle technique was effective, and took out a porcelain bottle the size of an egg from his coat. And he, go get a bowl of warm water. Sister he turned around and went to the coffee table. She took a glass and took half a cup of hot water from the water heater, mixed it with half cold water, and brought it over. Yu Xuxian pulled out the stopper of the porcelain bottle and poured some yellow medicinal powder into a cup. This is Ichi powder. Mr. Liang will take it and it will be fine for now. His heart is a bit strange, not like pathological. I will take a closer look when he recovers. Okay, thank you, Xiaoya. Sister he was also quite frightened. As a full dot time waitress, if something unexpected happened to her, she couldn't help but take responsibility. The male doctor saw that Mr. Liang had turned the tide and quickly drove out the idle people. He arranged for nurses to place monitoring instruments for Mr. Liang. On the display screen, 
various data are displayed, and everything quickly approaches normal. The male doctor will print various data records and prepare to return to the department for consultation. And arrange for nurses to prepare for the following examinations, Yu Shushan saw that he couldn't get in touch for the time being, so he left the room. He still had unfinished hygiene work. In just one morning, Yu Shushan finished the work of four suites and was exhausted enough. The first thing is that this job is not like taking on a shift for Miss Lee, Miss Lee's area is a public area, a bit sloppy, and no one speaks. However, this room is hygienic and not sloppy. The second reason is that Yu Shushan had never done such a job before, and the conditions of the Lintian temple were simple, so the sweeping was not as meticulous. However, the people who stayed in this suite were all former influential figures, and there were dedicated waiters below, so the requirements were particularly strict. Money is really not easy to earn. At noon, Yu Shushan went to a big restaurant for lunch and bought a set meal for 10 yuan. The aunt of the restaurant saw that she was a stranger. She used a spoon to pull, half a spoonful of fried pork with radish, half a spoonful of stewed noodles with cabbage, and half a spoonful of laver egg vegetable soup. A typical combination of two dishes and one soup, with meat and vegetables. Yu Shushan held a food plate and sat at the dining table, tired and hungry. He smelled a pig-like smell of cabbage noodles and watched the white flower-shaped fat slices flipping on the carrots. He really had no appetite at all. Try to drink a mouthful of laver egg vegetable soup, which is bland and tasteless, like warm water that has not been boiled. At this moment, I felt that Master Chongxu's cooking skills were quite good, at least much stronger than this set meal. I took a few bites and was about to get up when I heard a loud bang. A woman in her twenties, dressed in fashionable attire, with a tall figure and a tapered face, held a pile full of food plates in both hands and placed them heavily on the dining table, rubbing her fingers exaggeratedly and exhaling. Wow, it's so hot. Glancing at Yu Shushan's food, his lips covered in lipstick pulled back, revealing a contemptuous expression. Zimo. Zimo. Come here. I have prepared your meal for you. A twenty-year-old young man turned his head to take a look here, hesitated for a moment, and finally walked through the crowd. Meichi, there's no need to trouble you to make meals for me. I treat you every day, how embarrassed I am. Oh my! We are classmates. How much money can we get for a work meal? The food for these two people is much more abundant than that of Yu Shushan. One is fried chicken, one is steak, one is lily salted egg yolk, one is black fungus cauliflower, one is ice pear slices, and one is corn rib soup. By comparison, Yu Shushan's dishes are much more meager and somewhat inferior. The woman named Meichi, holding a golden grilled steak, said openly, Zimo, this steak is well grilled. It's said to be imported from Australia and originally served exclusively by a small restaurant. The restaurant manager knows me and specially left it for me. You can try it. Yu Shushan is only 16 years old, and he has some childishness. He wanted to get up and leave, but wasn't that a blatant display of weakness? No way. Even if I eat fast food for 10 yuan, I still have to maintain a posture of a thousand yuan. Immediately gather your energy, pull out your momentum, eat and drink big, and look like you're enjoying yourself. Oh. This younger sister is young and came out to work as a janitor. She works really hard. Your food is not awesome. It's time to grow up. Look at your small face, sallow and skinny. I can't eat any more chicken legs. Here you are. What's going on? Am I sitting here properly to give you a sense of presence and superiority? The young man next to him just frowned and didn't speak, eating his food on his own. Yu Shushan is really innocent, even thinking about it makes him angry. He saw a school emblem hanging on the chest of the two people across from him, with the words, Jiangning University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, on it. It seems that these two are college students interning at Jiangning Sanatorium, thank you, sister. I never eat beyond my means, 
and I am accustomed to self-sufficiency. Although I don't earn a high salary in cleaning work, I earn it myself. When it comes to eating and drinking, I feel very at ease. The implication is that you, an elderly person who consumes your parents' money, have no confidence and show a sense of superiority. After speaking, Yu Shushan picked up his plate and walked away without looking back. Leave that woman named Meichi with an awkward expression on her face. I had to say to the young man, the quality of this rural resident is really low. I don't appreciate it. Two young people rushed in at the entrance of the restaurant and collided with the plate in Yu Shushan's hand. The leftover cabbage, noodles, seaweed, and egg soup splashed onto their clothes, creating a huge mess. Are you blind? Chapter 10 Being Bullied by Others You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yu Shushan secretly said, Is today his own dark day? What bad luck! I grudged with the green tea lady, a little absent. Minded, not on guard. These two people were like reincarnated ghosts in a hurry, and even if they bumped into me, they didn't hesitate to speak out. They couldn't help but feel angry and said calmly. Did you make a mistake? You hit me. Which I did you see me hitting you? It was clearly you holding a dog food bowl and throwing it on me. Pay me for my suit. At this moment, the restaurant was in the dining season, and hundreds of people were eating and fighting. They heard each other arguing and gathered around in a lively manner. Even though it was you two who rushed in and bumped into my plate, it was clear and sunny. So many people saw it, how dare you talk nonsense. Who saw it? This obese young man arrogantly pointed at the crowd surrounding him with his fingers. Which of you saw it? I bumped into her. Little bitch. Don't you even take a look at this place. In the Jiangning Sanatorium, my brother Yuan said one, who dares to say two. A young man with yellow hair from behind also stepped forward to speak up. Yu Shushan knew in his heart that he had encountered a second dot rate character and felt a bit uncomfortable. What are you planning to do? What should I do? Of course it's a loss. Yuan Shao's Roman suit has just been on, and I won't offend you. You can compensate the whole amount and give it 10,000 yuan. Huang Mao naturally volunteered and stood up for his master. With a soft chuckle, Yuan Shao, look at this little scumbag. He's so poor that he doesn't want to. He seems like someone who can compensate for 10,000 yuan. The speaker was Meiqi, who had previously shown superiority to Yu Shushan. At this moment, I happened to be watching coldly, and by the way, I fell into the well and hit a rock. It's okay if you don't have money. Kneel down and count out three times to me, and I can also spare you. Yu Shushan's face is as calm as water, which has been the cultivation of Taoist energy for many years. However, his heart is already filled with anger and constantly rubbing against it, but he constantly reminds himself that this is a civilized society, this is a legal society. Shameless. Yu Shushan cursed, turned around and left, but deliberately walked towards the green tea girl Meichi. Little bitch, you want to run? No way. The chubby man surnamed Yuan extended his hand and grabbed it, causing Yu Shushan's left shoulder to sink and flash. The chubby man grabbed everything in one go. As soon as Huang Mao saw the boss take action, he dared not fall behind. He immediately attacked fiercely, accelerated from the start, and kicked Yu Shushan's back with a flying kick. Yu Shushan had been waiting for them to amplify their moves, with one side of their body giving way to their background and revealing Meichi, who was watching the excitement behind them. Huang Mao couldn't hold back and kicked Meichi's lower abdomen. With a scream, Meichi fell backwards, her eyes turning white and her whole body twitching. A group of people were frightened and scattered in a huff. Now Huang Mao was frightened and pointed at Yu Shushan angrily, saying, It's all your fault. It's all your fault. Why are you hiding? You're responsible for this. Yu Shushan sneered, I'll take responsibility for your brain. 
At this moment, the four security guards who had been watching at the restaurant entrance rushed in together when they saw that the situation had escalated. They naturally know this person surnamed Yuan and Huang Mao, and know their background. When they see them bullying a little girl who does cleaning, they don't even want or dare to do it. But now that someone has been injured, it's not enough. While calling for first aid, they are surrounding Yu Shushan and not letting him go. The fat man pointed at Yu Shushan and roared, it's this little slut who kicks people, catch her. One of the security guards, who was the head, really pulled out a pair of handcuffs and wanted to handcuff Yu Shushan and take him away. Stop it. The young man who had been squatting next to Meiqi stood up. This person was an intern from Jiangming University of Traditional Chinese Medicine who was accompanying Meiqi for lunch. Meiqi was injured by this yellow-haired kick. What's the matter with the little girl? You are a security guard, not a criminal investigation police officer. What power do you have to handcuff others? Do you think everyone doesn't understand the law the security chief was suddenly taken aback? He was used to bullying ordinary people. When the handcuffs were on, he was so arrogant that he shouted loudly. Who dares to resist? Unexpectedly, encountering tough things would really cause trouble, so I had to turn my head and look at the young fat man as if seeking help. What kind of person are you? Stand up for this country bumpkin. I am interning here at the University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and I can see the whole process clearly. What kind of skill are you two men capable of bullying a little girl? Is it really your family that runs a sanatorium, what kind of onion are you? You dare to meddle in my business. Mao Zi, call someone over and beat him up. Jiangning Sanatorium is actually a large comprehensive hospital. Due to its wide area, it was later built as an attached sanatorium. Gradually, the sanatorium became more and more famous, and it surpassed the hospital, so it was renamed Jiangning Sanatorium. So, first aid does not require external delivery. Soon, medical staff carried a stretcher and took Meiqi away. The four security guards were at a loss for a moment and had to quietly call their superiors. Yu Shushan felt annoyed in his heart. This was not a trivial matter, and he couldn't leave for a moment. Once the police arrived, the situation became even more complicated. At this moment, the person Huang Mao called arrived, consisting of twelve or thirteen young thugs aged sixteen, seventeen, and twenty. The fat man suddenly gained a sense of authority, give me this dog man and woman to die, as long as they don't die. Now the four security guards are in a hurry, the security leader pleaded with the chubby man surnamed Yuan. Yuan Shao, let's wait for the leaders of the hospital to handle this matter. It's not good for you if it gets too big. Get out of here. Don't get in my way, or we'll beat all four of you together. When they were about to engage in a mass brawl, fortunately, several police officers from the nearby police station arrived in time, but the chubby guy still kept shouting incessantly. Director Liu, the main culprit is this rural slut who openly beats people here. You handcuff her away and detain her for ten and a half days first. It's not me who hit people, it's that yellow-haired one. Right or wrong, check the surveillance video, and naturally understand. The police officers at the police station basically understand what's going on. But Yuan Pangzi's father is the vice president of this Jiangning Sanatorium, with a rank of department chief, moreover, the Jiangning Sanatorium receives people at the departmental, ministerial, and even national level, and his father's network is even more unfathomable. I am just the director of a deputy police station, and this police station is also a nursing home police station. How dare you offend him again? Why don't we take this woman back to the police station first, lock her up, check the condition of the injured person, and then take further action? Lu Zhigao pointed at Yu Shushan, whether to check the surveillance or not is up to our police, we don't need you to give instructions. Turning his head to the four auxiliary police officers, he shouted, cuff it up. Take it back to the facility. For auxiliary police officers, three pulled out batons, one pulled out shiny handcuffs, and rushed up from both sides. Yu Shushan is troubled in his heart. 
It's not difficult to get rid of these auxiliary police officers and leave. But if you take action, it is a blatant resistance to law enforcement, but it is a crime of obstructing the execution of official duties, and it will bring endless troubles in the future. If you surrender, it's not a big deal to be wronged. Once you lose the ability to resist, it's like being slaughtered by others. And this director sat crooked from the beginning, definitely not a good bird. If he wants to make things difficult, he will definitely come to torture and confess like Chu Qingzhao. That would be a huge punishment. Besides, how unlucky it is to wear handcuffs. The auxiliary police officer holding handcuffs stepped forward to capture Yu Xiushan's arm. Yu Xiushan could have dodged and avoided it. How dare you resist arrest? Lu Zhigao let out a loud shout, then quickly pulled out his gun and pointed it at Yu Xiushan. The crowd exploded in one go, be good. This bullet doesn't have long eyes, it's better to avoid it. At this moment, a loud voice sounded. What's the noise? A restaurant doesn't eat well. Are you watching around and playing monkey games?